Well, I'm sorry to say that the Westpac Melbourne Institute Index of Consumer Sentiment tumbled by 7.9% in May. Clearly, the key factors there were the the surprise decision by the Reserve Bank to raise interest rates at the May board meeting, and of course the response to the federal budget. Normally we conduct the survey in the week of the Reserve Bank board meeting and we're able to gauge the impact of the Reserve Bank decision, so we get a measure before the Reserve Bank decision and a measure after the Reserve Bank decision. But this time we delayed the survey till the following week so we could assess the impact of the federal budget. What we found was that about 40% of the fall in confidence came before the announcement of the federal budget and the other 60% came after the announcement of the federal budget. Now that seems pretty tough on the federal budget. I think there was an element of people being concerned about the impact of the budget on inflation and therefore interest rates. Westpac has a very clear view on that. Even though we, our assessment is that the stimulus in the budget is higher than we've seen in any budget between 2010 and 2019 before the big stimulus of COVID, we don't believe that that will be enough to put upward pressure on interest rates during 2023. The issue will be whether the cut in interest rates that we're expecting in 2024 will need to be delayed as a result of that stimulus that's going through the economy in the second half of 23 and into 24. But the news on the budget was not all bad because one of the the key questions that we've asked about the budget since the first, since 2010, is has the budget improved or worsened your financial position? Now, every year, uh, households indicate, more indicate that it's worsened than improved. That's just a standard set of results these days. This time we had 27% 27% said worsen, 15.5% said improve, a net balance of 11.5%. That's actually very good. In fact, we've only seen one net balance that's smaller uh, in the response to the 2018 budget, which of course included substantial tax cuts. So I think overall the government can be reasonably comfortable with the response to the budget. But of course, the interest rate story looms over everything. The surprise rate hike obviously concerned concerned households. Uh, 70% of them now expect to see interest rates going up further. That's up from 62% in April. And the confidence of people with a mortgage fell by 10%. Actually, those renters' confidence was down by 13%. And without a doubt, one of the issues that's emerging very rapidly in this economy are concerns about the spending profile of renters who are now coming under enormous pressure with regard to record low vacancy rates and rising rents. Another issue that we look at is whether now is a good time to buy a major household item. Uh, And that item actually stabilised in the survey. But the concern there is that that index is still lower than it was at the low point of the early 90s deep recession. So clearly, uh, there is still considerable concern about the outlook for spending in those major household items. There was better news on employment. Uh, Confidence around the labour market lifted by 3.6%. Now, we need to get that into full perspective because since the peak in that number in September, it has come off by 23%. So what that's indicating is that yes, we've seen some stability in this particular month, but the overall story is that labour markets, while people, being, while people are still much more confident than they are on average over the, over the long-term history, we're starting to see some gradual weakness emerging in the labour market. Not so the housing market. I would say the biggest surprise of this survey was the 10.7% lift in people's house price expectations. That comes after a 14% jump last month. The index is now at 144. Now at 100, it means that the number of people expecting prices to rise over the next 12 months is approximately equal to the number expecting prices to fall. So at 144, we have optimists outnumbering pessimists by a factor of four to one. Uh, this, This issue along with this concern about interest rate hikes, 
cannot, cannot be, are inconsistent. And we're, actually, we're going to have to see a resolution of this. Now, if interest rates continue to rise, then I believe this extraordinary optimism in housing will start to flatten out. The Reserve Bank Board meets on June 6. We think that they'll pause again to review the situation with regard to their rate hike back in May and the, accumulate, the accumulation of 375 basis points of rate hikes since May last year. Uh, the big issue for interest rates, I think, will be at the August board meeting when the Reserve Bank gets a clear read on inflation and has another month or so to assess the impact of their tightening cycle. There are clearly two different messages coming from this survey. On the one hand, this renewed optimism in housing uh, and the ongoing strength of the labour market, which of course is something that two of the factors that were mentioned by the Reserve Bank when they raised rates in May. So that's a factor that will be negative for the interest rate outlook. But on the other hand, the clear message that spending is starting to really lose momentum. And we're expecting that over the next few months that will become even clearer whilst we do expect to see further progress in bringing inflation back towards the band. So our view at this stage is that their rates will remain on hold in August, but we can certainly see that the risks are evenly balanced either way. Thank you very much.